Hi, I'm Natalie Brunel with Bitcoin Magazine, and today I'm going to be talking about money printing, wealth inequality in the US, and of course, Bitcoin. If you're new to Bitcoin, you might be wondering why so many of us talk about the Fed and why money printing is so bad for the average person. We used to have such a strong middle class in this country, and the data shows it is quickly declining. According to Pew Research, the middle class once represented the biggest share of US income earners. Now it's the upper class. Aggregate income earned by middle class families fell from 62% to about 43% in the last 30 years, while upper class families went from representing 29% of all income to almost half, and poor families dropped from 10 to 9% of all income. So if you're one of those millennials who can't afford a house as easily as your parents could, or maybe you're racked with debt, then you probably feel like the cards are just stacked against you. The slice of the wealth pie is getting bigger and bigger for the richest in America. According to recent data from the Fed, the top 10% of US families own 76% of our nation's wealth. The middle 40% of families own 22% of our wealth. And the bottom 50% of families combined own 1% of the wealth. Oh, and there's 13 million families who are just in debt. They have negative wealth. So it's not really surprising when you have politicians shouting tax the rich and so many people cheering them on but the problem was actually created in part by the people in Washington. Instead of Occupy Wall Street, we really need to Occupy K Street in Washington, D.C., the address of the Fed. Bitcoiners and Austrian economists will tell you that a huge reason for this surge in wealth inequality is actually money printing and something known as the Cantillon effect, which essentially means the people closest to the money printer benefit from it the most. It's important to note here that 40% of the US dollars in circulation today were printed in the last year, mostly in response to the pandemic. And you might have gotten those nice little $1,200 stimulus checks, but the truth is most of that money went to the people and companies that need it the least and spiraled our country into more debt. Okay, so how does money printing actually work? When the government creates new money, it doesn't actually print it. It credits banks with electronic dollars, dollars that came out of thin air. Banks then lend those new dollars to the most creditworthy entities at the top of the economic pyramid. Investment funds, corporations that, by the way, end up buying their own company stocks and wealthy individuals. So what happens next? The stock market balloons, the real estate market balloons, and it has a massive impact on the price of assets. Activist Avik Roy recently wrote an article for National Affairs touching on all of this. It's called Bitcoin and the U.S. Fiscal Reckoning, and it's an amazing read. Discussing money printing and creating bubbles in things like the housing market and stock market, he says, quote, This is why the price-to-earnings ratio of S&P 500 companies is at record highs, why risky startups with long-shot ideas are attracting $100 million venture rounds, and why the median home sales price has jumped 24% in a single year, the biggest one-year increase of the 21st century. Meanwhile, low- and middle-income earners are facing rising prices without attendant increases in their wages. If asset inflation persists while the cost of housing and healthcare continue to grow beyond the reach of ordinary people, the legitimacy of our market economy will be put on trial. Now couple all of this with the Fed artificially lowering interest rates, which just encourages borrowing and consumption instead of saving and investing for the future. And you have an economy essentially stealing from the poor to give to the rich through the secret tax of inflation. So here's the big takeaway. When the supply of money expands, it weakens the power of each of your dollars, making it harder to afford everything around you. Meanwhile, the new money created tends to pool with the top 5 to 10% of the population. Is that capitalism? Is that a fair economy based on value? Does that make life for the average person easier? Look, if we're gonna print money, then it should at least be backed by something that can't be inflated. We were once backed by gold. Now US dollars are essentially backed by debt and a very powerful military. So basically the threat of violence. Bitcoin offers a peaceful escape route to opt out of this very broken system. Bitcoiners want us to return to a system of money that can't be manipulated by the Fed and where all of us have a chance to improve our lot in life. Instead of an infinite money printer, Bitcoin has a fixed supply of 21 million coins and an immutable ledger, the blockchain, owned by everyone in it that keeps a record of each and every transaction through a distributed network around the globe. And for many of us, we see it as a life raft. 
Don't you want to be able to know that the money that you earn is going to hold its value into the future? Allow you to actually think about the future and plan for things that you and your family might want and need? Look, Bitcoin doesn't have a long history. It's at the baby stages of monetization. But look at the charts. Here is the purchasing power of the US dollar since the creation of the Fed. And here is a price chart of Bitcoin over a little more than a decade. The dollar's value is in the midst of collapse and everything around you is getting more expensive. Meanwhile, Bitcoin shot up from being worth just a few cents to more than $60,000, and we're still early. So if you're not close to the money printer, don't you want to be close to Bitcoin?